God. Let's stand this morning as we uh, get ready to come into the presence of the living God. Amen. I like what the psalmist says in 120, Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm even glad to be here this morning, huh? Amen. Amen. It's fun to be in church. It's good to be in church. We love to be together as the family of God, in the house of God, in the presence of the living God who loves us and gave himself for us. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, dear God, for your divine presence, Lord. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, that you never give up on us. You love us. We can't do anything to make you love us any more or any less. Lord, you are love, and we thank you, and we praise you this morning uh, for this opportunity to be able to be here. We pray that you would anoint our worship. Lord, our giving, our preaching, our praying, everything that happens here, Lord, we offer it all to you, dear Father. In Jesus' holy and powerful name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's rush into his presence and worship the Lord. Amen.
We worship you, Jesus. Lord, we want your presence in this place, God. We want your presence in this place, Jesus. Send your spirit in this place, God. We worship you, Jesus. We're hungry for your spirit, God. We're thirsty for your spirit, Jesus. We want your presence in this place, God. Lord, we prepare the way for you, Jesus. Lord, go through each aisle in this place, Jesus. Touch the hearts and the minds of the people in this place, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus.
that you inhabit the praises of your people. And Lord, we want this to be a habitation for you. We want you to inhabit this place. We just pray that you fill this place with your presence. Lord God, help us to just step aside of ourselves and worship you and give you honor and give you praise, oh God. We want you to fall. We want your presence to fall in this place. We want you, we ask you, Lord God, to touch every heart in this place, every mind in this place. Inhabit this place, oh God. Set my 
my spirit on fire for you. Yeah. Set my heart on fire. It's been way too long since I've got down on my knees. I need you. so glad that we serve a forgiving God. So glad that we serve a God who extends grace forever. That extends love no matter no matter what you do, no matter how far you run and how far you go. That his love extends forever. As far as from the east is from the west. That's the God we serve. That's the one true God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus, hallelujah. You know, sometimes in this world, it's so easy to get caught up, caught up in the busy lives and caught up in the motions. It's so great to just sit down and to worship and to think back, God, what did God bring you from? What did God take me out of? And remember those things and to just raise your hands and remember that love and to remember that grace.
are so good, God. You are so faithful. Thank you, Lord. You are. Thank we you, worship Jesus. you, Jesus. You deserve all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, Lord. We worship you, Jesus, and we thank you for your presence in this place, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. How many of you know we got to press into worship? Yes. Right? Does your flesh want to worship God? No. So when you come into the house of God, you got to lift your voice and lift your hands and break through. Everybody say breakthrough. Break you got to break through. You got to press through the realms of the flesh because the flesh doesn't want to do anything in terms of worship. How many of you know your body posture is worship too, right? Amen. That's why we lift our hands, we lift our voice, we do these things, right? Amen. Yes. So uh, I just want to encourage you to do that. I was going to come up and kind of maybe see if we can get things rolling a little more, but I just wanted to leave you with that. Uh, uh, Pastor Tom's going to come in a minute and uh, lead us into uh, communion. But I want to just remind you that you need to press in to worship. Your flesh does not want to do that. You've got to rule over it. Yes, you do. You've got to bring it into subjection to the born-again man inside of you. Right? Amen? Yes. All right. Let's worship. We're going we're gonna to have communion. Pastor Tom, would you come? Good morning. This morning we celebrate Holy Communion, and it is a reason to celebrate. And uh, we do this because Jesus instructed us to do this as a remembrance for what he has done for us. And along with uh, him, uh, what he's done for us, he's made us some promises. And one of them is he's promised we will never hunger or thirst. John 6.35 says... And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And he's also promised that we will never die, and that is the promise. Uh, that uh, when we spend eternity somewhere, it's going to be in heaven with his Father. And uh, we're going to know the Father like he knows the Father. And there's a glimpse of that on earth. When we know him, we know the Father. But in heaven, we're going to know him uh, like he knows the Father. So he promised we will never die. John 6, 47 through 51 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat this bread... He shall live forever, and the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians uh, not to take communion unworthily, and I talked a bit about this last week, that uh, we're never to be under condemnation. Holy Spirit convicts us, corrects us, but never condemns us. And we know where condemnation comes, and we ain't having it. Uh, we know our standing with God. So 1 Corinthians 11, 27 and 28 says, uh, Whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine, examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we humbly ask you, to help us examine our hearts. Reveal to us any trace of pride or arrogance or any other foolish things of the world. Help us to forgive as the Father forgives. Help us remember our standing in the kingdom and to see ourselves as the Father sees us. Let's take a moment for personal reflection and uh, just make sure we're right with God and worthy to receive these elements.
continuing in 1 Corinthians uh, 11 through uh, 23 and 24. For I have received, you know, actually, let's distribute the elements before I get into this a little more. Um, you can come uh, either gather around the altar or take them back to your seats, uh, but we'll all um, receive together uh, after I read the scriptures. So uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24. For I have received of the Lord, which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As we take this bread representing your body, help us to remember all that you did for us, becoming a living sacrifice for us so that we may be brought, brought back into right relationship with God. As you instructed your disciples, we too take this bread in remembrance of you. Continuing 1 Corinthians 11 at verse 25. After the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Do this ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he come. And in this way, as we take this cup representing your blood poured out from the cross, we acknowledge that you are the supreme sacrifice for all our sin. Because of your blood shed for us, your body broken for us, we can be free to live or free from the penalty of sin and death. Thank you for your victory over death. You took the death that we deserved. You took our punishment. Your pain was indeed our gain. And today we remember and celebrate that precious gift of life you gave us through your blood that you spilled. Lord, we take this cup in the same way you instructed your disciples to take it, because we too are your disciples.
let's let's drop it on the floor. Each time we take communion, Lord, we recommit, we recommit our lives, our thoughts, our everything to you. Fill me today with your powerful Holy Spirit. As we leave this place, help us to hold this fresh remembrance in the story that never grows old close to our hearts. Help us to share this message faithfully as you give us opportunity. In your precious name we pray. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can commune with you. And we can be in your presence. Hallelujah. How many of you love to be in his presence, huh? Yeah. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to come into the presence of the living God? Praise God. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Let's continue to worship in our giving. If we can have our ushers come, please, we're going to... Uh, continue our worship this morning. How many of you know that giving is worship too, right? You know, as raising hands and clapping and singing is obedience to worship, so is giving obedience to what God calls us to do uh, in terms of returning to him a tenth of all that he blesses us with. Amen? And so we gladly give back to him one tenth of all that he enables us to be able to receive in the gifts and talents and abilities that he's put within us Father, we thank you this morning, dear God, for this opportunity, Lord, to return to you a tenth of all that you've blessed us with in terms of tithing. And Lord, in love offering, anything over and above that, we just thank you. We praise you, dear God. And Lord, we, we honor you uh, even in our giving, Lord. We're so thankful for all the blessings that you pour out on us, the, the protection that you give us, the provision, Lord, that you provide for us. And all that you do for us, dear God, we gladly, dear God, give this to you. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody says amen and amen. God bless you and thank you uh, for your faithfulness in giving. Praise God. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Um, I heard Tom Brotz back there. Tom, you're in church, right? Good to hear you back there, brother. <laughs> He's been feeling better, amen. I was, I just, I was sitting there, I was thinking, I saw, oh, I heard Tom, that's good. He's feeling better, amen. You know, we love our family, our church family here, and uh, when somebody's not feeling well, of course, we miss them, and we pray for them. In fact, uh, Mitch and Adina's little ones are, uh, uh, the, the little girl's not feeling well, we're going to pray for her. She's got that RSV stuff, so uh, let's pray for her, okay? And then uh, there's others, too, I was thinking. Jeff Page is not feeling very good. Uh, Jane is not feeling good. Who else? Mia. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, Tony Trace, you're not feeling well either? Let's let's list them all. Does anybody know anybody else that's not feeling good, huh? Anybody know anybody else? We're going to pray for them all right now. You ready? Heavenly Father, we lift up to you all these uh, people that are part of the body of Christ and part of our lives, dear God, and we ask that you cover them with the blood of Jesus, circle them round about with angels of protection, and Lord, we call upon your word in Psalms 91, verse 10 and 11, where it says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. We thank you, Father, for your divine protection. And, Lord, that you have come, dear God, that we can be healed of our sicknesses, Lord. For you, the Bible says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. It says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. It says, by your stripes we were healed. Amen. And so, Lord, we stand upon that, and we ask for it in faith believing that you reach out and touch everyone, dear God, in this family of Christ. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. 
All right, Diane's going to bring the announcements. All right, we're having our coffee fellowship time after the morning service, so we invite you to come on downstairs and have some treats and uh, visit a little bit with each other. And um, we're sorry that we kind of forgot to mention a thank you for Pastor Appreciation Day. Um, it was like, at, I felt like right after that day I got into harvest party mode, and I was like, zoom on my way, and then I just realized last night, we never thanked people. So I think I did. I, I don't know. I just feel like we didn't. So we much. certainly do. And we had such yes. a blessed day. You know, just everything that people, the kind words and the, you know, the cards, that, you know, things that people wrote and the gifts and the wonderful meal. It, we just had, we just had a wonderful day. You guys made it a very special day for us. And we thank you for that. And we felt very loved. And um, we did. And loved and appreciated um, you know, for our years of commitment and standing in the gap, just staying steadfast for the Lord, uh, we thank you all very much uh, for all the things that you did. Some people even brought me food, trying to make me fat, but that's all right. I was enjoying every bit of it, right? Spacing out a little bit. Still, still, you know, staying down there and wait. So anyway, I'm very thankful for all of you. Right, and then we also want to thank everyone that worked for the harvest party everyone that helped carry stuff from our house and you know the setup and the working at it um what a day do you agree i mean it was just a wonderful day the, the god gave us a you know beautiful weather and a great turnout uh, you know and and just watching everyone that was working i just you know we were so proud of everyone you know it's like this is our church team and we had people from Living Water Tabernacle. They helped, and you know, uh, <coughs> Chris, Chrissy, and and Ben and Katie. They came over and helped. You know, they're from a different church too, and just we all worked together like a well-oiled machine. It was, it was just, it was fun. You know what I mean? It's a lot of work, but I have fun every year with that. It's just, uh, it's just a blast. It's a, it Our whole a church body just loves it, you know, and to see the little kids you know, come and how happy they are and then go on the wagon ride and yeah. all of that, you know, as an alternative to trick or treating, we offer this. And Well, and we uh, know most of the people coming by off the sidewalk, they, that's what they're doing. But you know what, they're, we're, you know, celebrating it, you know, that day a different way. And we just want to bless people, you know, with the food and the games and just make it a fun family time, a safe time and, you know, just to be a blessing for our community. So we just thank all of you for the hours that you know, that you can in put in in any way that you helped. And then we want people to know on November 20th, um, Dave Aiken has a puppet show that he puts on, and it's, it's wonderful. I mean, he's got a whole setup of a, of a what do you call that, little, little house, little stage thing, and so he's going to bring that, and so we're going to have that, he's going to set that up downstairs. That's going to be for the whole Sunday school. So we want parents to bring in their kids. They are going to be blessed by that. It, it's uh, going to be great. So that's November 20th. That day also we're going to have a church bake sale, and that's going to go for the district ladies' retreat. So we need people to bake goodies and buy them. And eat them. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at you. I knew you'd get in on that somehow. And then also... Uh, we're having a potluck on Sunday morning, November 27th, to celebrate the November birthdays. So we asked that you would bring a dish to pass. Um, I have a wrong date in there for the church Christmas program. I was looking at November's calendar <laughs> instead of December, so I'll change that for next week. But um, our church Christmas program will be December 18th, so I'll be thinking of that. You know, if you you would like to participate and. Um, Josh, I don't know where you're at with this Appalachian mission trip. Do you know where you're at? You need some time to work on that. Yes. 
So let us know. Give us an update once you. So whether or not that. we go, I guess you know we still can collect um, the. Let me see. What are we doing? Hats and hats and socks. We still can collect that, and I could probably you know mail it down to headquarters or something, or to Randy Lawrence, and then they we so we still could participate. So you could still bring those items in. We'll get them. Okay. All right. So we can always I can we you know can always box it up and mail it out there to them. So if we still would bring in some of those kind of items. You can give us more details next weekend, right, Josh? Okay. Or post things too. All right. Are there any testimonies this morning? Anybody have an answered prayer that you'd like to share that builds faith? Nancy? Um, yes. I uh, have every year for, on, I'm on Section 8 housing, and every year I have to put all my stuff in and for my income and everything, and then they come back and tell me how much my rent will be and everything. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting, and she didn't send me anything, saying anything. So I texted her and I said, or emailed her and said, um, you know, is my rent going to be the same for November? What's going on? And she said, she emailed me back and said, well, she said, this is what's happened. Right now for one whole year, the they will not count any of 100% of my income at all. And then the next year will be only 50% of my income will be counted towards that so I was like oh my lord yeah I that's that is definitely a praise the lord so I just want to thank praise him for God. that it was good amen yeah. provision it, it's yes. all about tithing too yes so. yes he answers that doesn't he you tithe, yes. amen all right anybody else all right Karen yeah I asked God to help me out with my diabetes because it was really bad and I was on four shots four times a day and when I went in the other day they told me that my diabetes went way down so did my weight and I only do shots if I'm over 250 but I'm hardly ever over 250 so I was really happy about that and I wanted to thank God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you Lord Jesus. That's great. That's great. Amen. One more, anybody else? Pastor Tom. Pastor Tom. How many of you know we serve a God of healing? Amen. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Amen. And uh, I was uh, I was pretty down last Sunday, and uh, I am just thankful that uh, that number one, COVID negative three times negative, <laughs> and uh, second of all that. Uh, symptoms are almost completely gone and I'm able to speak and I don't know if Cheryl's so happy about that but uh, <laughs> anyway I just praise the Lord for amen. healing yes. right praise, amen yes. amen praise God awesome you, and Pastor Tom will be ministering next Sunday and we're going to be on the road uh, heading down to general board uh, for all the bishops in our organization uh, that will be the 14th, 15th, and 16th of November. So uh, please keep us in prayer. We'll be traveling, and at this time of the year, you can get slippery roads. So uh, we appreciate your prayers uh, while we're doing that. All right. One more. Amber, yes. Okay. Amen. God will watch over you on that morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Oh, yesterday, we had our ladies' meeting, our lift, Ladies in Faith Together, and we had it at uh, Cheryl's house. We had such a great time. You know, we did 
We uh, had fellowship. We had lunch together. We did the Bible study, chapter 4. We finished it. Um, so, uh, But it was so nice to be together and just visit. I mean, when I come to church on Sundays, it's so hard for me to just visit with people because, you know, there's just so much going on. Um, so to be able to relax and take the time and visit just it was just a wonderful time. So if you didn't come, uh, please come next time. Our next meeting is December 3rd here at the church at 10. So please come out. Amen. Amen. That's great. The ladies always have good fellowship when they get together, right? Amen. Amen. As do the men in the church. We don't have the men's group thing meeting right now, but we still... Uh, fellowship and hang out at times and uh, I appreciate the men of the Faith Christian Center uh, we acknowledge you we honor you and we appreciate you each and every one of you so all right let's uh, let our uh, students go down for the classes if they haven't already they can and teachers may head down for classes and uh, uh, Nancy's gonna read for me I believe Aaron is is uh, not with us today um, so if you want to go to, um, we're going to start out uh, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 31. If everybody wants to turn there, please. If you've got a Bible and you're going by pages, some people use, I believe, their phone uh, for the Bible. And I do ask you, if you have phones, please only use the Bible. Don't be texting and other stuff. God knows if... I believe the sanctuary is a holy place. And we gather here in the holiness of the Lord's presence. And we need to honor that, um, you know. And so uh, I do acknowledge and understand that there are people that use their phones for reading the Bible, and that's, that's fine. That's awesome. Uh, it's one way that technology is a blessing for us, right? Yeah. Amen. So... Anyway, we're going to be in uh, John chapter 4, verse 31. And I uh, just want to say, too, in terms of testimony, personally, uh, I thank God that my finger is healing up. Uh, uh, seems to be per uh, quite well. Um, I get my stitches out on Tuesday morning. And so uh, hopefully it'll heal up uh, the, 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 all those little things, all those little holes. i got big black whiskers there right now, six of them. And uh, they need... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm uh, looking forward to getting those out of there, and uh, I did get to use my table saw since then, uh, but I used a push stick. Yes, I used a push stick, brother. So I was careful. Yes, Amen. You got to do it right, right? Amen. I, I got a little bit reckless, and uh, uh, just I guess I wasn't concentrating enough or something. But anyway, uh, it's healing up, and um, soon we'll have this off. Uh, by the time I preach two weeks from today, uh, I'm sure it'll be gone and good. Amen? So we are in the Gospel of John, chapter 4. We're going to read verse 31 through 36. 31 through 36. Would you stand this morning, please, as we reverence God's holy word for the reading of these opening verses? In the meanwhile... His disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, dear God, for your precious and holy and powerful word by which we live, by which we uh, feed upon, dear God. And we pray that this morning that you will open our eyes of understanding to the scriptures, that you will reveal truth to each one of us as you do so well individually, Lord, as the word is preached. Lord, you touch each one of our hearts and minds, and Lord, you give it personal uh, revelation as we hear it. 
And so we pray that you open our eyes of understanding and reveal truth to us, dear God. Lord, we pray that you anoint me to bring forth this word. Let me not speak any words of my own, but speak by your spirit, dear God. And Lord, let it be fruitful. And we pray, dear Father, that uh, uh, I thank you, dear God, for the anointing that I ask for. I receive it and believe it by faith. I give you all the praise and glory and honor for it and acknowledge it. Without you, I could do nothing that would avail anything. And so, Father, I thank you and I praise you. Give us liberty and freedom this morning, Lord, to hear your word. Let us be focused and receive it. In Jesus' holy and powerful name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. So I was uh, uh, waiting upon the Lord this week to see what he would have me uh, minister. And it got to be last night. And uh, I haul out my notes. I have a document that I keep uh, sermon notes in. Whenever I receive something uh, during the week that I believe is from the Lord that could be uh, potentially uh, part of a sermon, I have a document that I record all those notes in it. And I went and looked at it uh, last night. And in uh, this verse, uh, th these verses were, uh, were at the very end of my document. And uh, I thought, you know, uh, right, right at the bottom. So I thought, and I, I looked in other areas and that, praying and seeking God, and, and he kept directing me back to this. So I believe this is what the Lord wants for us this morning. And so we're going to take a look at it, unpack this area a little bit. And we're going to be talking about the will of God. Everybody say the will of God. The will of God. And we're going to be talking uh, about the will of God for our lives as well. And how God, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, can touch each one of us as we hear this message this morning as to how the, uh, uh, the, 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 the will of God uh, affects each one of us individually and personally. Um, you know, and let the Holy Spirit guide that and direct that conversation in your hearts and minds as we go through it here this morning. I want to remind everybody that when we come in, with open arms to the Lord and hungry and and, and uh, Josh back there yet? Josh, that song, Hungry, you didn't know that, but that was really going to fit uh, this message this morning uh, in, a, in a very cool way. Uh, but being hungry for God, we want to be hungry for Him, hungry to know Him, hungry to hear His voice, to experience Him in different ways. We've been talking about experiencing God uh, recently and about getting, having revelation from the Lord. And so we, we want to be hungry uh, to receive from him and to, re to receive from him. And so um, that, that was very fit. That song this morning was very fitting. I was being blessed by that as we were singing uh, that song to the Lord this morning. And Josh didn't know what I was going to preach. I didn't know what he was going to sing. And so that, again, is an example of how God weaves himself through a, a service. Uh, when we get together and we meet, um, how God just interjects himself uh, into the mix. When we, our ears are open, we're listening to the Lord, we're hearing from God, and we're being directed uh, by God. So as we look at this this morning, um, let's see. Let me go to uh, the third screen there, um, uh, Nancy. Where is she? All right. Uh, give me my notes there, if you would, please. What's... It says the will of God. Okay, and then after that? What is the will of God for your life? Okay, so let's look at these statements. What is the will of God for your life? Have you ever wondered that? Right? You ever wondered the will of God? Somebody says daily, I heard. <laughs> you know, what is the will of God for my life? And this is, this is relevant to any age. Any age that's hearing this right now, this is relevant to your life. What is the will of God for my life, right? What's the next statement there? Discover the will of God. What are your skills? So we want to discover the will of God. What is the will of God? When we try to determine the will of God for our lives, and we are pursuing discovering the will of God, of course we want to also consider what are our skills? What are our skills? Um, why would there be a connection between our skills and the will of God. All right? If he has given us skills, how many of you have 
believe that he wants those skills to be available to him. Yeah. Right? Amen? So he has given each of us skills. He's given each one of us talents and abilities. I might be getting ahead. Is that the next note there? Yeah. What is it? Centered around your gifts, talents, and abilities. Centered around your gifts, talents, and abilities. Your skills are centered around your gifting. What gifts has God given you? What talents has he given you? What abilities has he given you? I like to say in terms of tithing, this is interesting. Uh, some people have a very, very hard time with realizing that all that they have comes from God. It's like, no, I went to school, I studied hard, I developed a train or a skill or different things, you know, and I put a lot into this and, and uh, the money I make is my money. How many of you know that whatever skills a person has, God has given them? Yeah. Right? And even your physical ability to do the things that you do, the mental ability, your capacity, all of these things are given by God. And so all that we have, therefore, is from the Lord. Somebody said, oh, pastor, you know, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Listen, I know. Because all of a sudden one day, I was without my physical eyesight. And I wasn't able to do the things that I formerly was able to do. I, had, I was a businessman, had three you know, businesses going on, building, racking, tree trimming, solar energy. This was way back, like over 40 years ago. And all of a sudden, lost my physical eyesight. And was stripped of everything. And what a rude awakening that was. That there was a God of heaven that had more control over my life than I ever realized, or more effect, I guess I could say, more impact over my life than I ever previously realized. And so if you have something taken away, like your eyesight, you become very, very aware of the skills that you have that are given by God and the fact that all that you have you are able, therefore, to receive because of the skills, because of God, what he's given you. Is this true? Amen? And it was a rude awakening for me. And that's why I like to share that in terms of giving, because, you know, sometimes people have a hard time with that. I, I've shared at times the last thing for the last thing gets saved on a person is their pocketbook. <laughs> true? Amen? So, some people understand what I'm saying, right? You can get saved, but, you know, well, don't, no, don't, don't ask me for a tithe. Don't ask me for the 10%. Listen, I can assure you of something, all right? Believe me, that when you give 10% back to the Lord, the 90% that remains when you develop a budget and you plan and you use it wisely as the Lord directs, it will stretch further than if you kept his 10%. And this is proven over and over and over again. And so I, I just want to encourage you in that way. It is so liberating for a person to realize that all that you have comes from God and he only wants 10% back. That is so liberating. I don't know why I'm sharing this, but this must be meaningful to somebody. Um, but I, I, I just it's very important that a person comes to that revelation because it's so much easier than to be able to uh, approach and be able to consider the whole thing about uh, tithing and giving and being generous and all of that kind of thing. And uh, there is Old Testament things. There's New Testament. I'm not going to get into all of that because it, that's for a different time. But uh, what I want to look at here uh, this morning is uh, the context here of Jesus. And this is where he had talked to the woman at the well. You guys remember that, right? Earlier in the, in the chapter, uh, he talked to the woman at the well and you know, there was a great revelation there that, uh, that he was, you know, the Messiah, the, uh, the anointed one that would come, you know, um, that uh, he had revelation of this lady, uh, that she was, uh, uh, that she, when he asked her to go uh, fetch her husband uh, to come, and she says, I don't have a husband, and he says, uh, true, and the one, you know, you've had five uh, husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband, or something to that effect. And uh, so anyway, she, she, got, she realized that he was uh, the Son of God and God the Son. And uh, as it goes on a little bit further here in the chapter, 
um, his disciples had gone into uh, town to, to, to get bread, all right, to get food. Everybody say food. They went into town to get food, and when they came back, of course, they uh, found Jesus talking to this lady, but we're going to skip ahead here to uh, verse number 31 uh, in John chapter 4, and uh, here is, is uh, you know, when they, when they come back and uh, they offer him uh, bread to eat, and he says in verse number 32, he says, um, I have bread to eat that ye know not of. Is that true? Meat to eat. I have meat to eat that ye know not of, right? Meat. And uh, looking that up in the Vines Expository Bible Dictionary uh, last night, um, it, uh, this here is referring to food. Everybody say food. Okay, just natural food. That's in my notes. I think it's up on the screen there. But, uh, you know, natural food, right? That there's just, you know, this is about natural food. They're coming and they're thinking about natural food. But all of a sudden, Jesus uses this opportunity to illustrate a spiritual truth. All right? And then in uh, verse uh, uh, 33, they say, you know, they're questioning one another. Well, somebody, you know, has somebody given them something to eat? You know, like you know, we just got back, and I didn't do it. Did you do it? Andrew, did you do it? Peter, did you? I mean, uh, you know, who? John, did you? Who, who gave him some food? And Jesus, recognizing this in verse 34, uh, you know, comes back uh, with a statement uh, that is very profound, very powerful, uh, very revelatory, I think, for any of us and all of us. Uh, and uh, let, let me have you read that in verse 34, just so I don't miss any words in it. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and, and to finish, finish his, work. his work. work. Right? Yeah. To do the will of him that sent me. This is, this is my meat. Okay, so, so their thinking, his disciples, are thinking about physical food, natural food, regular food, but Jesus responds to them regarding a different kind of food, a spiritual food. Everybody say spiritual food. This is a spiritual food that he, he's responding to. And he says, you know, the, the, you know my, did it say my meat? Is that how it starts out? My meat is to do the will of God, right, and to finish his work. So my meat my food, my sustenance, my spiritual sustenance is to do the will of God and to finish the work. I want, to th I want us to think about those two thoughts. Uh, to uh, to uh, do the will of God. Everybody say the will of God and to finish the work. He was on a mission. All right. Jesus was very missional. One of the things in our movement today one mission, one movement. You know, our general bishop at the, at the, the head of the P Pentecostal Church of God uh, has uh, coined this phrase, uh, one mission, one movement. It's, it's uh, throughout our organization. Uh, it's part of who we are and what we do and what motivates us and what moves us, uh, part of what guides us along uh, in our mission to serve the Lord. And so Jesus was very missional here. Uh, in his approach. He's, he's on a mission. Everybody say, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. Now, how many of you know that you become part of that mission today? Right? Amen? And there's a place for you in his kingdom where you become part of that mission today. All right? Now, when you think about food, they, the disciples were asking him about physical food, natural food, but he is thinking about a spiritual food. What does, so let's look at what does food do. And I don't mind a little response from the floor. Uh, but what does food do? When we consume food, what does it do for us? Anybody? Okay, it gives us nutrition, right? What else does it do? It fuels our body. It fuels our body. All right. What? Fills us up, fills us up, all right, huh? It sustains us, doesn't it? 
Yeah, makes us feel good. Would you say happy? Makes us happy, right? You know, we eat and we're happy. Anybody else? Other words? I'm thinking the word satisfied, right? We eat until we're satisfied. Or, and, well, sometimes we eat past that and we shouldn't, but <laughs> you can eat to the place you become unsatisfied because you ate too much. I got to tell, do you mind if I just tell a little side joke here? This is totally un irrelevant, but let, let me share it. <laughs> Diane and I had our oldest grandson at one point. We're coming back from Sun Prairie where uh, our oldest son and daughter-in-law lived at the time. Uh, and we had this, uh, 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 about a two-year-old, I think he was about two years old then, sitting in a car seat in the back. We took him to uh, Pizza Ranch, I believe it was, and came out and uh, got in the car. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, I'm so full. I'm so full, man. I just, I'm stuffed. I'm so full. All of a sudden, from the back seat came this little voice that says, change your diaper. <laughs> I was thinking my belly was full, but he's used to his diaper being full. So he had a solution for me. Yeah, yeah, that's. I know. I thought you'd enjoy that. So, <laughs> yeah, out of them all the babes. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you know, when we think about what food does for us, so it does sustain us. And I don't. Somebody might have said this, but the word that I was thinking of this morning too is that we're fulfilled, fulfilled by what we eat. Right? When we eat food. Now, if we take all of these. Words that we have, the, these thoughts that we have generated uh, amongst us, and we apply them to spiritual food. Everybody say spiritual food. When we apply them to spiritual food, do we find that we experience similar things? When we eat spiritual food, we do, don't we? We're fulfilled when we read the scriptures, right? When we eat spiritual food. Uh, we're, we're satisfied when we get done with time of prayer, we spend time, uh, devotional time or some kind of a season of prayer. So I've spent time with, with God in prayer. When we get done and we feel good. Everybody say good. When we feel good, like we, like we got something done for the Lord. We did something needful, something useful, something beneficial, right? And, and we feel good about it. We feel fulfilled, Right? Somebody said happy. How many of you know we feel happy, right? When we get done eating spiritual food, you know, we feel happy. When we think of that, you know, we're happy. Well, how many of you know that we want to not only be happy, fulfilled, and, and all of that in, in a physical sense, but we also want to in a spiritual sense? So how do we become spiritually satisfied, spiritually happy, spiritually fulfilled, and we find that Jesus has the answer here to that. Where he says, my meat is to do the will of God and to finish his work. Doing the will of God will therefore provide you satisfaction. Yeah, a famous group from years ago when I was back in the world used to sing, I can't get no satisfaction. Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones, yeah, I mean, that's, so for some of you, that's ancient, but the, the fact of the matter is he was looking in the wrong place. Amen? Because the world won't satisfy you. You can't get satisfaction by eating out of the hand of the devil. Amen? You can't get satisfaction by being involved in the things of this world, the things of this life. You're not going to get satisfaction by being out there searching for and seeking for happiness apart from God. You're only going to get that deep, deep satisfaction in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The world doesn't have anything to offer to you that, that is better than what God can give you. Amen? I, when I was in the world, I used to drink, and sometimes I'd even get drunk. But I'll tell you what, 
when I came to the Lord, I found there's nothing better than getting drunk on the Lord. Amen? Getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. Amen? You know, being filled with the Spirit of God to the point that you feel uh, overcome and, and, and just drunk in the Spirit with the Lord from being so heavily in His presence. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing. Amen? And somebody said, oh, is that in the Bible? Yeah, it is in Acts chapter 2, in fact. Um, right around verse 17 and, and uh, right a little bit before that. Um, it's in there, you know. They all came out right on the day of Pentecost when they're all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. Amen. And they came out uh, and appeared to be drunk. Uh, and and Peter said, "This is not that which he supposed. In other words, that they were drunk on new wine, but this is that which was." Uh, uh, spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and upon my servants and upon my handmaidens in those days I will pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy Amen. So there's an outpouring of the Spirit. There's things that can happen that will help us to be satisfied, help us to be fulfilled uh, when we're searching for God, when we're seeking God, when we're crying out to Him, when we're learning about Him, when we're pursuing Him by reading the Bible, the Word of God, and getting into the things of God, we can find some of the deepest satisfaction that we ever had. Now listen... I know what it's like to be drunk out there in the world from intoxicating beverages. And when I came to Jesus Christ after losing my physical eyesight, about three months or so after that, roughly, I began to realize how much clearer my mind was, how much clearer I could think, how much better I could reason, how much better I could remember things. The years of smoking pot and drinking alcohol took a toll on me. How many of you know this is typical of people that are in the world out there, right? You know, I mean, I've had numbers of people tell me when they see me, you know, I'm 68 years old, and they say, wow, you sure look good. And, and I'm thinking, Lord, oh, all the glory is to you, Jesus. I was sharing with Diane recently. Her and I were alone, and we were talking, you know, just talking about things. And I said, you know what? God has got his hand on our life so much. I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for the body of Christ, all of you, those of you that pray for us, that come alongside of us, that work with us as the family of God. You know, we just did the Harvest uh, Festival, you know, and, and did this outreach to the community, for the community, right? Amen? You know, and everybody working together. I'm just thankful for my life. I feel fulfilled in serving God. I feel satisfied in serving the Lord. I feel that God has his hand upon me. And I say that because if you're living for God, he has his hand upon you as well. Amen? In different ways, he has his hand upon you. And if you stop and think about it, and, and are willing to be thankful, we're going to find that's part of the will of God, is if we get that far, is to be thankful, right? That we can be very thankful for all that the Lord has done for us, all that he's doing, all that he's going to do. When he changes a person's life, when he changes their path in life, when he changes how they live, how they act, what they listen to, what they watch, where they go, what they consume, what they hear, what they feel, what they touch. When God changes all these things to line up with his kingdom, being disciples, Christ followers, believers in his kingdom, life is different than out there in the world. And I'm very thankful for that. It's better. It's like way better, right? It's much better. God gives us a destiny. God has a destiny for you. He has a future for you. He has a plan for you. Is this true? Amen. And what did Jesus say? To fulfill the will of God and to finish his work. Jesus was on a mission. You were on a mission. Jesus had a plan that was given to him by the Father. You have a plan that has been given to you by God. You might not understand it completely. You might not see it completely. But when you put yourself in the hands of the Lord, he has a plan and a purpose for you. There's a reason for you to exist. 
There's a lot of people today that are very unhappy in life because they don't really know why they exist. They don't know, you know, really who they are. Why are we, why why am I here? Some people ask themselves, why am I here? You know what? And they and they they don't have a sense of the value of their life. Christ values every life, even the unborn. Christ values every life. Is this true? Amen. He values all of you. If there was just one of you, Jesus would have died on the cross for you so that you could be forgiven, that you could be redeemed and reconciled to God, that you could be brought back into a right standing with God after Adam and Eve blew it in the Garden of Eden. God, Jesus, came to fix that mess. And he has done it well. And we can have a good personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and we can find that we eat of that spiritual food of fulfilling the will of God and finishing his work. Everybody say work. work. You're all on assignment from God. You're all being led by the Lord in what you do. Somebody says, oh, pastor, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I don't feel like I'm doing very much. Listen, everybody here can pray, right? Yeah. That's the first thing you can do is pray. Pray for your family, pray for all you know, pray for your church, your pastor, your, you know, the, the, uh, our, our organization. Pray. There's so many things to pray about. You can, you don't, if you get in a prayer mode, you really get into prayer, you can find that you can, you could pray almost all day long. You probably could pray all day long. You know, every day, you know, there's so much to pray for when you get into that mode of being in prayer. You get into some prayer and fasting, you know, fasting. After about 12 hours of fasting, opens your spiritual eyes to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and so, you know, you can, you can just hear his voice better uh, in that case. Okay, let's, let's go on. Where am I at there uh, in the notes? Um, what do you have a burden for? Okay, is that the, that's the heading of that yeah. screen? Okay, and the first scripture there? 1 John 2, 15. Okay, let's turn 17. over to 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15, 1 John 2, 15, 1 John 2, 15. So what do you have a burden for? And I want us to think about Jesus. I don't want us to lose sight of everything today is based on that scripture where he said, my meat is to do the will of God and to finish his work. What do you have a burden for in terms of finishing his work? Remember, when we come to him, we're burdened down with the things of this life. Right? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right? Those the people that are burdened with life apart from Jesus. And so when they hear that Jesus is the Son of God, and God the Son, and that he gives life, that people can be forgiven of their sins and reconciled to God, and people make that choice to receive him as Lord and Savior of their life and to become a Christ follower, a believer, that then everything changes. Everything changes. They become aware of the mission. They become aware of the fact that God has a plan and a purpose and things for you to accomplish, that God will give you a better life. Now, I'm not saying that it will be without, without uh, uh, challenges at times. But God will always be there to help you through every challenge. How many of you know the earth is not yet redeemed in full, right? You know, we live in a fallen world. You know, we live in a world where there's evil. Somebody says, why is that? Because God wants those that are going to be in heaven with him for all of eternity to have chosen to receive him and be in heaven with him. He didn't program us to be robots that have to serve him. He gave us a free will that we must choose to receive him. Is this true? Amen? Yes, amen. You know, that we choose to receive the Lord and deliver him and serve him. So over here in 1 John, to go further with this, in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Okay, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, right? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the what? 
The will of God abideth how long? Forever. Forever, right? Let's unpack that a little bit more. Okay, let's go back to, for, uh, uh, for uh, let's see. Oh, I have to start from the beginning, I guess. Give me that, the, the um, yeah, no, no, 16. Okay. For all that is in the world. Okay, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. What is the lust of the flesh? First of all, we must, dis we must understand that we can lust for things. Lust isn't always related to sexual things. Of course it is, but it's not limited to that, right? We can, to lust after some things means to crave it, to want it, to covet it, to want to, to have it. So we can lust after things, right? For the lust, for uh, the first one is the lust of the flesh, right? What does the flesh lust after? What does it want to have? This can be something that can be very worldly or fleshly. In fact, in, in, in verse 15 where it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. There is a world system. All right? There is a system that uh, you would understand uh, that is of the world. Okay? It's the fallen world. Everybody say fallen. fallen. It's the fallen world. It's, where, it's what happened to this earth and this world when uh, Adam and Eve blew it in the Garden of Eden and, per, and partook of the forbidden fruit, and all of a sudden uh, their eyes were opened to good and evil, right? And so uh, that's when e evil came into the world, and that's when Satan was loosed, you know, in this world. He's referred to at times as the god of this world. He's not the god of all, but he is the god of this world. I want you to know that there's scripture that talks about him going to and fro in the earth in Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, I believe it is, about when he, when he came before God, and this was in the heavenlies, all right? And uh, God said, well, where have you been, Satan? He said, oh, going to and fro in the earth and, go, and going up and down in it. There is an enemy out there that is a supernatural being that we need to be aware of, right? Amen. So that we don't fall to his evil devices and evil schemes. Amen. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we want to be under God's protection and God's provision. And this only happens when we know him and we love him and live for him and serve him. Right. And so, yeah. you know, the, the Lord is saying to us, don't love the world or the things that are in the world. Instead, we want to love who? We want to love God, don't we? Amen. Uh, for all is in the world. Well, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, if you love that, if you love the world, love not the flesh. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Okay, I mean, you know that the eyes lust after things, right? Right. The lust of the eyes can lust after things, or the pride of life. Right. Apart from God, we are prideful people. Charles Finney, a great evangelist of the mid 1800s, wrote that the two main things that have to be changed in a person's life when they come to God is pride and self-centeredness. Pride and self-centeredness. We are prideful beings. Even if we have a low self-esteem, there are ways that we still have pride in our life. Pride is part of our old nature, our old character. So these are things that we must overcome as we come, when we come to God. Okay? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world, this world system, right? Okay? And, and uh, give me the last verse now. And the world passeth away. Okay, right there. And the world passeth away. Now, thank God. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God that the world, this system, the way it is now, is going to pass away. It's going to change. It's going to come to an end. And we want to be in the realm of living for Jesus and serving him. Our meat to eat is to do the will of the Father, right? Amen? The will of God. And to finish his work. Okay? This world is going to pass away the way that we know it now. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides how long? Forever. Forever. He that does the will of God. He that does the will of God. So, therefore, I, th I see it very important, revealed here in the Scriptures, that we would seek the will of God for our lives. 
that we would know the will of God, that we would know the work that there is to do, that we could be part of that work that there is to do. Okay, what's the next thing in my notes here? I'm going to take this. Who do I love for God? Or what do I love doing for God? Well, I have this First Peter 4, 1, 2. Is that what you're taking? Is that under that? Um, it's a separate paper. Sure. Okay, let's go there. Let's go to First Peter or four, one and two. Four. First Peter. What's that? What do you have a burden for? That's, that's the title, what we isn't just it? Did. Yeah, that's the title. And we did we cover everything under that one? There was more than just the first John two uh, it must be the first Peter four. Yeah, one let's two. go there. First Peter chapter four, verse uh, one through four and then verse seven. First Peter four. I don't have that. First okay. Peter chapter four. It says one and two. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, well, we're going to do one through four. First Peter chapter four. Let's start at verse. Let's start. We'll see what's there. Let's start at verse one and two. Okay. What's that? <laughs> yes. Okay. That's right. Amen. For as good, much good food. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yes, okay. Okay, there it is. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffereth in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Okay. So arm yourselves with the same mind as who? Jesus. Jesus. Right? He had suffered in the flesh. He was willing to suffer in the flesh. Okay, and then three and four? I don't have three and four, but I have two. That he no longer should live the rest of this, his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. You okay, three and four? To, yeah. the, to the will of God. Okay, so there is in verse two, to the will of God. We want to live according to the will of God. Look at verse number three. For the time past of our life may suffer us, suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revel, reveling, revelings, <laughs> banquetings, and abdo- abominable idolatries. Okay. You want four? Yeah. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Okay, in verse 7, let's see what 7 is. It Somehow this, I think I got something mixed up here. But, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Okay. All right, so it's very important that we do that. All right, now let's go to the next thing. It Back on that, under the burdens. Hebrews 10, 36 through 39. Yeah, let's go there. Okay. Hebrews 10, 36. Can everybody go there? I put this together last night past midnight, so uh, maybe I was getting a little tired. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It does happen, yeah. and that's even with moving the clock back, you know. Or <laughs> <laughs> okay. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God. You need to have patience, right? All of us do. That after we have done the will of God. Look at this. Ye might receive the promise. That then we'll receive the promise after doing the will of God. Okay. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We're not of those that draw back. There's some Christian circles that believe that Christians can't backslide. This area of Scripture right here gives them problems with that because it's possible for people to go back to what God brought them out of. He even talks about a dog going back to its vomit or a hog to back to, you know, wallowing in its mire. There's sometimes that people uh, uh, get deceived by the enemy. They get stumbled. They get tripped up. They get 
uh, uninterested or whatever, and they go back to the world and the ways of the world. It's possible to backslide. Just like you choose to live for God, you can choose also to deny God. And there's places in the scriptures where it talks about that. How many of you think that Satan would love it if people think once saved, always saved? Huh? The devil would love that. And some people melt that for all it's worth. They, one day they repeat a prayer, uh, and they think that they're saved, and they still live like the world. It's very clear that God calls us out of the world. He calls us to holiness. He calls us to a different life, a different way of living. Sanctification. We're going to get there. Let's just go ahead. Next. The next is, what do I love doing for God? All right. So what do we love doing for God? What do we love doing uh, for God? All right. When we're thinking about fulfilling God's will and finishing the work. First one is? Psalm 40, verse 8. Okay. Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. I delight. Everybody say delight. I delight to do thy will, O God. Thy law is in my heart. He puts his word in our heart. The word that we live by. The word that we obey and walk by. Okay, next. And then a must do. Oh, there was only, there's more under that one, isn't I there? I don't have anything more under Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's one up. Okay. Yeah, there really. certainly Can is. go back to the last one? Okay, then there's one, Psalm 143.10. Yes, let's get that. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Look at that. Isn't that great? Yeah. Teach me to do thy will, O God. Thy law is good. You know, teach, you know it's, just, it's just so it's exhilarating. I love it. Uh, it's, when you develop a love for God's word and you read it and consume it and you're fed by it, it's your meat. It's your spiritual food. Amen? It fulfills you, satisfies you, builds you up, strengthens you, makes you strong. You eat food in physical terms so that you can be strong. You eat spiritual food, the Bible, the Word of God, to be spiritually strong, to be able to fight off all the enemy, to be all the attacks of the enemy, to be able to fight off all the attacks of the world and all the lust of the flesh and all these things. We can fight them off when we're deeply into the Word of God, into the things of God. All right, what's next there? Matthew 12, 46 through 50. Uh, okay, let's go there. We'll just go through that real quickly. Okay. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and the sister and mother. I love that scripture. Who is my mother and my brother, my brethren? And he says, he that doeth the will of my Father is my mother and my brother and my sister. Yeah, we don't want to forget the sisters. Lorraine would be, she'd be right on me about that. That's right. You're filling in for, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. We're brothers and sisters. Amen. We're all part of the family of God. All right. So, you know, th this, this is significant. You know, it's really important that we understand that, you know, what is he, who does he consider to be your family? The brethren, right? The brothers and sisters are the, they that do the will of the Father. So how important is it that we do the will of the Father? It's very important, amen? And that we're spiritually fed by, spiritually sustained by, satisfied by, fulfilled by doing the will of the Father. So our life's endeavor is to figure out what is the will of Father, the Father for each one of us, right? What's the will of God for my life? 
What's the plan of God? What's the purpose of God for my life? This you find by reading the Word of God, being in Bible study, being in the sermons and the preaching, and being in Bible studies, being in prayer meetings, having daily devotionals, seeking God, calling upon God, drawing close to God. And as you do all these things, He will open your eyes of understanding more and more, as I ministered last weekend, in that He will open to you the Scriptures as well, and it becomes more and more clear the pathway that God has for you. He has a plan and a purpose for you. Okay, what's the next verse? Okay, all right. Let's, yeah, let's go, uh, we got to go off notes for a minute because uh, there's a couple, of, go to First Thessalonians chapter 4 and here's the verses 1 through 4. I know what got mixed up now. Uh, go over to First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, verse 1 through 4 and then 7. We're going to look here. Here. We're going to look here. Right here. Right here. We're going to land. We're going to land right here. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. Are you there, Nancy? All right. Go ahead. Oh, it's up there, too. It's up yep. there. Up there. Up there. Okay. Okay, let's go. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. You can keep going. Okay. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Everybody say, this is the will of God. All right. Here it is. Let's go. Even your sanctification. Your sanctification. Being sanctified. What does that mean? It's akin to holiness too, right? Being sanctified means to be set apart unto God. You're set apart from the world unto God. Set apart from the world unto God. This world system that we talked about earlier, we want to flee that. And instead, we want to be set apart unto God. We are God's workmanship. We are God's temple. We are his abiding place. The Holy Spirit lives and dwells in us when we're born again. Amen? The Holy Ghost lives in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's read on. That you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And, okay, so we should avoid fornication. What in the world is that? That's sexual activity outside of marriage, outside of wedlock. It's sexual immorality. Right? Amen? We need to possess our body. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus now owns it. Everybody say, I don't own me. You gave yourself to Jesus. You gave your body to him. You gave yourself to him. And he wants you, and he wants you to possess your body in sanctification and holiness, not out there being like the world. Is this true? Amen? Oh, I know conviction's a hard thing. We all have it at times, right? Amen? Okay, go ahead. And then verse 7. Yeah. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God has not called us on uncleanness, but on to holiness. All right? And then go down to uh, 5.18, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In First, everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks, for this is the what? The will of God. I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, being thankful. You know, the will of God is for us to be thankful, not always unhappy and grumpy and crabby and you know no I know no Christians ever do that <laughs> perfect in every way <laughs> wasn't that part of that vanity song <laughs> perfect in every way <laughs> anyway uh, yeah all right I'm totally distracted all right go ahead <laughs> yeah now a must do. Yes, let's go there. Okay, we're, we're coming in for a landing. Everybody put your seatbelts on. We're coming in for a landing here pretty soon. Right, Joy? Amen. How are you doing, Cindy? You speaking in tongues yet? 
Good. Use that all you can. That's a prayer language from heaven. Prayer God. She got baptized with the Holy Ghost a few Wednesdays ago. Amen. Praise God. That's a prayer language. That's a, that's a powerful thing. An endowment of power from on high. All right. Is there something that I could not live without doing for God? Okay. And let me ask you this. Is there anything that you can live without doing for God? Anything that you can live with without doing, without doing the will of God? This is something for us to think about. You know, are there some things, I need to rephrase that. Isn't that awful? It's an ugly way to put that. Huh? <laughs> I was trying, I was trying, well, it was probably 12.30 last night when I was, you know, trying to put this down and get it right, you know, get it right. But are there some things that we just absolutely, uh, uh, you know, would die for? You know, that we, that we would, uh, we would be willing to die for something for God, right? How many of you be willing to die for the Lord, yeah. right? There's some things that you just couldn't live without doing for Jesus. You got to do it for the Lord, right? Yeah. All right. Let's let's in, in the, the scripture reading here is in uh, Matthew 26, right? Okay, and, and uh, for, something through 42, uh, 36. 36 through 42. Okay, let's read. You're going to recognize this. This is in the Garden of Gethsemane when he goes there with his disciples to pray. Let's read it. And then right below the your, your live without God, doing for God, you have Jesus modeled it. So yes. Yep. Je in this so, scripture. so this is what we're looking at. Jesus modeled doing the will of the Father, doing the will of God. He modeled it before us even at the cost of his life. Okay. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and heavy and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. If Never it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Has anybody ever been there before? Mm. Been there at some time in your life? Lord, this mess I'm in, this jam I'm in, this sickness I'm in, whatever it might be, Lord, let this pass from me. I mean, you know, sometimes we get ourselves into the jams we're in. We get ourselves into, when we're out there in the world, right? And we get ourselves into the trouble that we're in, right? You know, how, how, many, you know, how, how many times might I have thought, Lord, let this blindness pass from me, right? I mean, who wants to be like that? I, believe me, I'd like to be healed, amen? I believe God for healing every day, but I have to leave that in his hands. I can't make it happen. I've tried to stand right when I've been in a prayer line. I've tried to say things right. I've tried to speak in tongues, not speak in tongues. Try to lift my hands, not lift my hands. What, any, all these things to try to, you know, make it happen. How many of you know I can't make it happen? And you guys too. There's things you can't make it happen. Sometimes we go through things. But God is with us through those things, right? As I've said before, I don't understand why I still can't see because I believe that he heals. And I prayed for, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people over all these years to be healed, right? And many have been healed. But one day when I get to heaven and I ask him about it, I'm sure it's going to make sense to me when he explains it, right? Because I trust him. Everybody say, I trust him. You know, and you trust him with your lives as well. Okay, let's read on here. Nevertheless, not as I will, but... As thou wilt. Look at that. He said, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Not my will, but thy will. This could be relevant for every one of us here today. Every one of us hearing online. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Right? Amen? You know, there's hard things that we face. But, with, but Jesus modeled this before us. 
to fulfill the will of God and to finish His work. We too are in the same boat. To, to uh, uh, submit to the will of God and to finish His work. Let's read on. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> is that true? Yes. We have to watch and pray, don't we? Because the spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak, right? And so we must pray. We must watch, watch and pray. Be people of prayer, right? Because our flesh is weak. We get tempted whenever we get lazy. Okay, let's read on. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Okay, it says, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. We want to fulfill the will of the Lord. And what things we go through in this life, at times builds our character. It's tr it expands our capacity. It helps us to be able to endure all things. It strengthens our determination if we see it through. It builds character in us. Is this true? Right? Amen. To fulfill his will and to finish his work. Okay, and the next? I don't have a next. Um, let's go over to Hebrews. I'm going to wind up here with just a couple. Hold on. Just, there's a Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Can you go there? Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Yep, Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. To do his will. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Okay. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Working that, in, that, is, that is pleasing in his sight. And I believe that this is what God wants of us. As we find his will, we explore, we discover his will for our lives, right? You know, and we, and we, and we find his will, his plan, his course of life for each one of us. And we will be patient, that we'll be willing, be sanctified, set apart unto the Lord, hearing his voice, being led by his spirit, people of prayer, you know, and... You know, finding his will for our lives. Amen. I want to pray this prayer over you before we close. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every one of us, Lord, myself included, that you will help us to discover your will for each of our lives. Lord, that you will help us to eat the spiritual food that we need to, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Lord, that we will fulfill, uh, that we will be fulfilled. Uh, for the hunger that is in us, dear God, by his word and by living for him and serving him and being led by his spirit, that we will be sanctified and set apart, Lord, unto your work to finish your course, to finish the work that you have for each one of us. I thank you, Lord, according to uh, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, that you have a plan, a purpose for our life. We thank you and we praise you for that. We stand upon that. We're comforted in that. We're fulfilled in that. We're very uh, happy that we can do the things, Lord, that's pleasing to you instead of pleasing our own flesh. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. And let me ask this. Is there anybody here this morning that you've never given your life to Christ and you want to make, uh, a, you, you want to receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior? I'd ask you, if you wanted, want me to help you with a prayer, just slip out of your pew and come on up here and I'll lead you in a prayer. If you want to give your life to Jesus and be born again 
and become a Christ follower, become a, a, a believer in the Lord, just come on up and I'll pray with you. Or if you once served the Lord and you have cooled off, you've drifted, you've gotten away from God, you need to recommit your life to God, I'd be happy to pray with you as well. Just come on up. If there be, I'm not going to have a rain of hands. Just have people come. Okay? If there's any need, come. All right? All right? I don't hear anybody coming, so I assume that everybody here is okay this morning. You all okay? Is everybody okay? All right. You're on fire for Jesus, are you? Yeah. Amen. Well, come on out tonight then, too. We're going to have... Uh, 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 Cheryl's going to be preaching tonight. Uh, for us, well, we're going and after the service here today, we're going to have snacks and that downstairs. So, uh, come on down for some fellowship and that uh, after the service. But be sure to come out tonight. All right, this is not just for those that preach on Sunday nights. This is for all the body of Christ. Uh, come on out. We'll have worship again. We're going to worship the Lord and spend some time with Him, and uh, we'll be continuing to seek His will for our life and what his plan and purpose is for us. That's our spiritual food. That's our sustenance. That's what will sustain us. That's what will satisfy us. That's what will fulfill us, is finding the will of God for our life and finishing the work that he has assigned us to do. Amen? That's where you're going to find happiness and joy. It's not out there in the world, folks. It's in living for Jesus. And I know that we're in this world. The Bible says we're in the world, but not of the world. So, you know, I know you've got to work and do all those things, but we've got to live right in the midst of all of that stuff. Amen? Let's stand. We're going to dismiss with a word of prayer. And uh, I think I'll call on Cheryl to dismiss us from the service with a word of prayer. And uh, like I said, there's fellowship downstairs if you want to go down there afterwards. Uh, thanks for letting me get to the end of this thing here. And, and uh, hopefully you'll be blessed by it and take something out with you today that you can incorporate into your lives right away okay we'll see you tonight heavenly father i pray that we just seek to always live your will lord in our lives lord i pray as we go home today lord that uh, we bless someone lord and that we drive safe and that we come back tonight lord seeking your will even more in your face in your name we pray amen